Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. I knew my love of chocolate powdered uh, flavoring from milk would serve me well. Um, we have this Nestle's comic uh, reprint of Action Comic number one from June 1938, the comic that started it all. It is so amazing. Um, I'm so glad I came across this. I can't wait to share it with you guys. It is super fun and cool. Um, the first arguably superhero comic book, uh, Superman Action Comics by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already hit that like button and let's get right into it. So I have my collection like slowly coming my way as I do my channel and um, you know, uh, I haven't seen some of these books in, in decades and um, I don't know how I got this, but I do believe it is a Nestle quick promotion you know, sometimes, uh, I mean, if this was at the store and, you know, I love Nestle Quick, like, even more than Hershey's Syrup, I feel like I like it the other way around now, but that's not super important. Um, but somehow I got this, you know, sometimes when you collect comic books and like comic books, you know, people just know and give you crap like this. And I don't know how I came across it, but I have it. I love it. It's great. I feel like they just came out with a facsimile and why on earth did I pass on it? I should have scooped that baby up. Um, I would have liked the better printing because I just read this and I feel like, I don't know if it's the first time I ever read Action Comics number one, but it is freaking amazing. Look at the beautiful logo on this, iconic, so cool. I cannot believe this is from June, 1938. Now, interesting to know, I mean, 10 cents, uh, you know, uh, this is when Superman is selling a million copies. Um, congratulations, Superman. It's 45 years and you are even more super than ever. A pinup by Joe Schuster here. I really love the art on here. I and, and the story too. Like, I'm kind of blown away. I feel like, uh, after reading this, it was no, um, no mystery why Superman just became so popular and was so cool. There is a lot of cool stuff happening on here, in here. You know, some of it, of course, is corny and antiquated. And, um, you know, some of the art is a little rough. But considering this was created by teenagers and, like, the first superhero. And, you know, it's very original and just, like, cool in a lot of ways. And just, like, so much fun things happening. So the thing that I found interesting here is this is first 1938, but it says the copyright is 1938. So then it says renewed 1965. Now, my question is, you know, because of public domain, I was thinking before I started this video that, you know, would Superman go into public domain in 2038? I mean, that is right around the corner. I mean, that would be kind of crazy chaos, right? And then reading this, it says renewed 1965. So is there like a loophole? Was like, does that mean uh, the copyright could go to 2065? Um, and I don't know the answer. I'm gonna have to dive into that. Feel free to comment, Superman of files or public domain of files. You know, uh, Winnie the Pooh just came into public domain. Now, interestingly, of course, that means that's like the original Winnie, Winnie the Pooh. You know what I mean? You can't like just take Disney's version and do whatever the hell you want with it because they have like licensing and, you know, on those images. So, you know, it's not just complete free reign. I mean, there's I feel like there's a lot more to it. I'm sure the nuance of public domain and copyright is like fascinating and like super detailed. Um, I find it interesting. This is one of my criticism. It's funny because I feel like, I feel like I, I, it, it was my criticism of like comic book movies, um, uh, like in the She-Hulk show. Don't get me started. I'm not going to rip it up. Um, I liked it. Um, but my only criticism was how fastly they glazed over her origin. And I felt like they could have expanded and made it the whole first episode. And I, I feel like I want to see that more with superheroes. But then you read something like this and his origin is, you know, this is the first appearance of Superman action comics, the first Superman story. And they tell his origin and basically like two, three panels here. Uh, you know, his rocket was escaping the doomed planet. We all know, you know, 
his parents came across the rocket. He was a baby that could pick up a chair, you know, he could easily lift girders and outrun the express train. I mean, it's funny how some of this has, you know, the wording on this has changed over the years, you know, thanks to my, you know, the other thing that I loved about this is it made me feel good that it's so good because I love Superman so much. He was like my first superhero because of uh, Christopher Reeve's Superman. And, you know, I had like a Superman doll. Um, I think it was based on Christopher Reeve um, and uh, a Superman cake and you know, it was all about Superman that year for my birthday. And um, I love the art in here. It's very of its time. You know, this is, it's funny. I, like I, like I said, you know, these are kind of just teenagers. So I'm like, is this like just the best artist in your class in high school? But I feel it's a little beyond that. You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like, you know, um, you know, the printing is, you know, of the time is like rudimentary and stuff like that. So it's like, I don't know, like what the parameters you're able to work in, but I'm appreciating a lot of the brushwork. Interestingly, I'm seeing like some Mike Mignola in that. Isn't that kind of crazy? Like I would have not expected that. Kind of seeing some of that in a little like P. Craig Russell and some sort of like the, you know, the cutaways of the shading and the, the long lines. I really, um, <clears throat> wasn't expecting this much artistry because like at first glance it's you kind of mm, it's I hate to say easily dismissive missable but you know it's not as exciting as like the comic books that I was used to um being introduced to you know like you know Paul Smith on the Art Adams on the X-Men and all that kind of stuff you know this looked at the time, like super boring and rereading it now with a new appreciation and love for this era of artists. I'm just, and, and especially, I mean, you take into account that this is arguably like the first American superhero comic book. Um, it's amazing. And it's kind of all here. And I feel like that's like why the mythos of Superman is so perfect. Like you have Lois being a total twat um, you know, he like asks her out and she, <laughs> and she's just like a total drag. And then this guy like tries to cut in and um she slaps him and Clark can't, you know, he has to like maintain his uh wimp, you know, persona. I mean, it is so telling of the times and it's just so crazy that like all that is involved with his secret identity. Not to mention the fact that I don't know I I don't know, it's just funny. But like I said, I'm loving the art. I love like the total flow of the story. Also super love the fact that the cover is a panel from the comic book as it should be. I think that was so genius. Um, you know, I would love to like, uh, God, you know, uh, I haven't read many interviews or, with, uh, you know, Jerry and uh, Joel, I would love to know about the creative process and like the thoughts that went into this. Like the fact that, I mean, that just sort of like, for me, any comic book at the time, you know, like, especially like 80s Marvel and stuff like that, um, you know, the, the, the cover is the best first panel of the comic book to sort of, if not open the story, at least tell some of this, what's going on inside of the story. And I just love that. You know what I mean? I felt like it turned the corner in the 90s uh, a lot because I feel like, and no offense, Jim Lee, but I feel like he was definitely responsible for, if not also perhaps a little error of life felt with the sort of stand and post covers with really no, you know, meaning for the story. But so I love that that was right here, like from the word jump. So that made me very happy to see that. I love that. Anyway, it's just fun. I love the art. I love the pace of the story. I love how Superman is very, um, I don't know. Like, it's so weird because it's like the big blue boy scout, you know, Christopher Reeve was so freaking nice as Superman, you know, John Byrne, my favorite, uh, Superman and, 
whom I read religiously and, uh, you know, at, you know, monthly for like the first time and very hit or miss before and beyond that. So to read this really initial first Superman and see him so well fleshed out and so here, but so, I mean, was this more like the George Reeves or the, um, I feel like Superman's kind of a dick. Am I wrong? Like, he, you know, he's just like, I, I don't know. He's just like, not as like caring or empathetic as I feel like he has become. <clears throat> and I'm kind of living for it. I know that's terrible, right? But it just, he has a backbone. He's like a freaking man's man or something. I don't know. I know this is like toxic masculinity that I'm spewing, perhaps. I don't know. But I don't mean it. I just, like, like I said, it's very of the time. Very ridiculous. But, you know, you kind of almost get it. Like, look how, like, menacing and, like, like, you needn't be afraid of me. I won't harm you. Like, you know, like, that's what Frank quietly tried to bring to All-Star Superman, to, like, to have his body language be so different um, that you could believe that he was a different person, even though he was basically just in different clothes with glasses on. You know what I mean? Um, so I love it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I also, it's reminding me a little bit of like William Moulton Marston or not, Mul um, shit, you know, the Frick, the artist of, uh, H. Gary Peter, Wonder Woman. <clears throat> Cut from the same cloth a little bit, which I also like to see because, and then you look, you, you, if you were to compare like Wonder Woman number one, you know, the, the Holy Trinity of DC next to, you know, Detective Comics number 27, which, do I have that somewhere? I don't know. I got to find these facsimiles and reprints and, because I'm really just just so blown away by, uh, I don't know, just, you know, just like how the blueprint of comic books right here, I just think it is so worth reading and so amazing. And I just love the art. I love the story. I love the well-developed characters. I love the hyperbole and just like the fun. And, you know, like I said, I'm not sure exactly what year this came out, this reprint from, <clears throat> what do you call it? 1983 is what I'm going to go with. Okay. So this is like some sort of newsprint reprint of Action Comics. Very cool anyway, right guys? Super fun. The comic that started it all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and I'll bring you more later.